COVID numbers are rising and it's because we've become complacent. We've stopped social distancing and we've stopped wearing masks. We are all fatigued. We are tired of being isolated from our friends and our family and our lives before March 2020. But there are going to be a lot of deaths in the upcoming months if we don't start social distancing again. And most importantly, if we don't start universally masking. There is so much information on the internet and it is so hard to discern what is fact, what is fiction, what is true, what is false. So today I'm going to be busting 10 masking myths for you. Myth number one, everybody, including kids under two needs to be wearing masks. Kids under two are the only group of people that get a free pass here. Please do not mask your kids under two because it is a risk of suffocation. Everybody else needs to be wearing masks. Myth number two, COVID-19 is no worse than the seasonal flu. I'm going to throw a picture up on the screen and I want you guys to notice how from January 2020 to present, COVID-19 has overtaken malaria as the number one cause of death worldwide and how it has also overtaken the seasonal flu. It is so hard to comprehend the severity of COVID-19 if one hasn't experienced it themselves or if they're not in the medical profession. It's also hard to know when the media is telling us the truth and when they're not. But I am here to tell you that COVID-19 is so much worse than the seasonal flu. There are so many more deaths from COVID-19 and the complication rate is much, much higher. Myth number three, there is no evidence to support wearing masks, so I'm not going to wear a mask. There is tons and tons of mounting evidence that mask wearing decreases the transmission of COVID-19. In fact, in the video that I posted three weeks ago, I referred to a study that came out of Hong Kong that showed that wearing masks can decrease the transmission of COVID-19 by up to 70%. Another big study came out just last week and researchers in this study found that wearing a face mask reduced the number of infections by more than 78,000 people in Italy from April 6th to May 9th and decreased the number of infections by 66,000 people in New York from April 17th to May 9th. These researchers concluded that wearing a mask in public is the most effective way of decreasing transmission of COVID-19. They also found that not only does wearing a mask decrease transmission to the people around us, but that wearing a mask does have some value for the mask wearer as well. If we look at other countries that have near universal masking, we've also seen that those countries such as Japan, Hong Kong, and South Korea have had a fraction of the number of cases that we have seen here in the United States. Take Hong Kong, for example. Hong Kong has a hugely dense population and people are living on top of each other there. Thousands and thousands of people take public transportation every day, but Hong Kong has only had 1,200 cases of COVID-19 and only four people have died. And that is because there is near universal mask wearing in Hong Kong. Myth number four, I am healthy and wearing a mask is gonna make me unhealthy. In my video on masks several weeks ago, I explained that wearing a mask does not cause brain hypoxia or brain hypercarbia. A viewer of that video left me a comment that I actually wanted to share with you because it brings up a very important point. What he said is, there are plenty of studies that show a decrease in O2 levels and an increase in heart rate by wearing masks. And I agree with him. There are some studies that show a decrease in blood oxygen when we wear masks. But what I wouldn't expect this viewer to understand and what I wouldn't expect anybody who hasn't studied physiology extensively to understand is that there is a difference between a decrease in blood oxygenation and a decrease in brain oxygenation. When we have a decrease in blood oxygen, our body compensates by increasing heart rate and increasing respiratory rate. That is actually how we protect our brain and make sure that our brains don't get a decrease in oxygen. Anytime somebody goes from sea level into the mountain, their blood oxygen decreases, but their body compensates for it. And that's why we never see those people with decrease in brain oxygen levels. Myth number five, I am unhealthy, so I should not wear a mask. This is actually just the opposite of what I would recommend. People that have unhealthy lungs, like people with asthma, COPD, emphysema, or smokers, 
are the exact population that should wear masks. And not only should they wear masks, but they should be wearing N95 masks because this is the population that is gonna have the greatest number of complications and deaths from COVID-19. For people that have lung disease, a slight decrease in blood oxygen or a slight increase in blood CO2 is not something that they should be worrying about in comparison to the risk of death from COVID-19. Myth number six, there is no evidence to suggest that cloth masks work, so I'm not gonna wear a cloth mask. I will leave an article in the description box below that actually does show that cloth masks do decrease the transmission of COVID-19. Now, it is true that the more layers that a cloth mask has, say three layers, the better it's gonna work, but wearing any cloth mask is better than wearing nothing at all. Myth number seven, if I'm uncomfortable wearing a mask on my face, I can just wear the mask over my mouth, but not over my nose. You guys, this is absolutely untrue, and I see this all the time. In order for masks to be effective, we have to wear them over both our nose and our mouth. Myth number eight, the WHO, or the World Health Organization, has not recommended that we wear masks, so I'm not gonna wear masks. It turns out that the WHO actually changed their recommendations on June 5th. They are now recommending that everybody wear masks if they're gonna be in close proximity with another person, for example, if they are at the grocery store. The WHO even goes so far as to make recommendations about cloth masks and wearing cloth masks with three layers. Speaking of the WHO, I was also very disappointed in a statement that a doctor that works at the WHO made in a recent news conference. She said that asymptomatic transmission of the virus is not a major mode of transmission. And she really confused the public because how could she possibly expect the public to understand that there is a difference between asymptomatic transmission and pre-symptomatic transmission. What she was saying is that people that are asymptomatic and who get the disease but will never ever have symptoms of it are not at high risk for transmitting the virus. But what she didn't explain is that people that are pre-symptomatic, people who are not experiencing symptoms yet, but who will go on to experience symptoms of the virus, are at high risk for transmitting the virus to other people, which is why it is so important that we all mask because any of us can be pre-symptomatic at any time. Myth number nine, Dr. Fauci and the CDC keep changing their minds and so I don't trust them anymore and I'm not gonna wear masks. Back in February, when we first started getting wind of this virus, people were hoarding masks. And Dr. Fauci and the CDC were concerned that medical professionals who were having to treat people with COVID-19 wouldn't be able to get their hands on masks to keep them safe in the hospital setting. So at that time, Dr. Fauci and the CDC recommended that we don't wear masks. We also didn't know back in February that the major mode of transmission for this virus was via aerosols. At that time, we thought that a major mode of transmission was by touching infected surfaces. Today, we know that the major mode of transmission is via aerosols, and we also know that cloth masks work, so recommending masks is not gonna take them away from healthcare professionals. So as data and information have evolved, so have the recommendations that the CDC and Dr. Fauci have made. So give the CDC and Dr. Fauci a little bit of grace because changing recommendations happens all the time in science. For example, in anesthesia, when new data comes out or new studies come out, anesthesia recommendations change. And people in medicine and science understand that as changes happen, so too will recommendations. Myth number 10. If we are masking, then we don't have to social distance. This is not true. While masking is a major mode of decreasing transmission of COVID-19, we still need to social distance, we still need to contact trace, and we still need to make sure that we stay home if we are experiencing any out of the ordinary symptoms because all of these things together are what are gonna help us decrease the spread of this virus. I hope that busting those 10 masking myths makes all of you feel more comfortable about wearing masks because I want you to be safe and I want you to be healthy and I want all of us to have some semblance of the life that we had before March of 2020. And the way that we can do that when we go to the grocery store or when we run errands is to wear masks so that we are keeping the people around us safe and so that we are keeping ourselves safe. 
I find it interesting that masking in this country has become such a political issue. And what I would like to say to you guys is please don't consider masking a political issue or some kind of infringement on your constitutional rights. Have respect for data and for science, but most importantly, let's just be decent people and wear masks so that we are protecting all the people around us. Be sure that you guys tune in next week. I am going to be doing a Doctor Reacts to Grey's Anatomy video, which I am really excited about. I already filmed it. I actually already edited it, and it will go up next Sunday. So be sure that you tune in next Sunday, and I will look forward to seeing you guys soon.